Thank you, Chris, for your lovely introduction. So Neurotech is a really exciting biotech play. And I want to just educate the audience for a moment before I get into the presentation about how biotechs actually work. So there's two major things. There's safety versus efficacy, and do the benefits outweigh the risks? And this is in any drug development. And cannabis is a really exciting space because there's a lot of cannabis companies that have come along. And there's one thing established about cannabis is that they are safe. Nobody's ever died from overuse of cannabis. But you have to actually show that the, that the safety and the efficacy. And so that's what we do preclinical trials for. We want to show that our drug is safe, which we pretty much know that it already is, and we know that we have to show that it's efficacious. But then you've got the second hurdle, which is do the benefits outweigh the risks? And the problem with all cannabis stocks is that they, they have THC within their compound. Um, but it's actually the cannabinoids that, particularly when you're treating neurological conditions, that's the key to treating a whole range of neurological conditions, be it autism, MS, um, Alzheimer's, and so forth. So they all have this problem because they've got the THC, with the exception of Neurotech. And Neurotech is the only company in the world that's exclusively licensed strains of cannabis that contain little to no THC. That's a really important distinction because we're actually the only one that's actually doing clinical trials right now. And that is going to unlock untold wealth for our shareholders within the company because when we actually establish that the, that the, company, that the product is efficacious, when it comes to the regulatory hurdle, do, do the benefits outweigh the risk? Well, if you've got a drug that you've shown is efficacious but it still contains THC, then that is a big problem from a regulatory hurdle perspective because then you've got a drug, it's a, it's a narcotic, um, you might be treating people to treat various things, but it's got THC within it. And that's going to be a real hurdle to overcome from a regulatory perspective. We don't have that problem. We still have to show that the product is, uh, that the product is efficacious, and that is obviously a big hurdle to overcome, and that's why we're doing the preclinical the, the pre studies and now the clinical studies. And the preclinical studies is a great indication of how your actual human trials are going to go. So just keep that in mind that we're the only company that's actually in clinical trials with a <coughs> cannabis product that has all the terrific cannabinoids that have the properties that are going to uh, unlock the potential for, uh, for neurological conditions without actually having the THC component in it. And that's effectively what this slide is talking about. We've got less than 0.3% THC naturally within the strains. And that is actually the key cutoff because if you've got greater than 0.3%, you're considered to be a narcotic. So we don't have that problem at all. And yet we've all got the, the within it, we've got the CBDA, the CBGBG, um, CBN, CBDB, CBDP. These are the key cannabinoids that all the research has shown is going to unlock the potential to treat a whole range of neurological conditions. And we've actually got a clinical trial being conducted at Monash Children's Hospital in Melbourne, and that's to treat autism spectrum disorder. We've had some terrific preclinical results in multiple sclerosis, and we'll be moving into human trials for that very soon. And uh, we've completed all these preclinical studies and now into human trials. We also have a product called Mente, which uh, we're commercialising. That's for also for the treatment of autism. It's a different type of product. It's a, it's a headband that children wear, and we're commercialising that as well. In terms of the corporate overview, um, you know, the share price is about five cents, uh, closer to six at the moment, it's almost 700 million shares on issue. We've got our quarterly report coming out tomorrow. Um, it's going to show a very strong cash balance. So we're going to have at least four quarters of cash, which is important for anyone looking to invest. There's no particular plans to do any capital raisings in the near future. So we've got a, a reasonable market cap of 35 million, but there's tremendous upside, particularly if we uh, hit the goals that we're, we're looking to achieve and there will be some very significant news in this company in the very near term. If you look at the board, a um, number of the people on the board are actually here today. We've got Winton Willisey together with uh, Chris DeBates in the audience now. Uh, myself, I'm a biotechnology entrepreneur. I've co-founded a number of ASX listed companies. Probably the most famous one is Imogene, which is currently capped at two and a half billion dollars. Um, other companies of, that I've had have all done fairly well over time and investors have made good money. And I might add that we've got Professor Alan Cripps who recently joined the board. Um, he's a terrific uh, addition to our, to our board and the experience. Uh, 
being a former Pro Vice Chancellor at Griffith University. He's just a great font of knowledge, particularly in this space for neurological disorders. So I think we've got a terrific team moving forward, and this is what you want to see on a really good quality biotech company. So if you look at the medicinal cannabis industry, um, it's obviously been, um, it hasn't had a great start because of the illegality of the THC element within cannabis. And there are only actually four regulatory approved drugs based on cannabis, um, which is incredible considering that when you compare it to opioids, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of drugs that are regulatory approved. And you can see the size of the cannabis market, it's very much growing. Um, it's, it's the terms of the numbers, yeah, they're big, they're in the billions of dollars, but compared to the opioid market, um, it's tiny. And, but look what's happening. The opioid market is actually starting to decline. And the reason for that is because people die. People die from overuse of, of opioids. And uh, it's a big problem, it gets a lot of press. So the medicinal properties of cannabis is just a huge growth industry. And that's the reason why you see so many cannabis that are now stocks that are listed on various exchanges in the world, particularly in Toronto and also on the ASX. But we are so different to all of them because of the fact that we're the only one that has less than 0.3% THC naturally within our strains and, and we can take that forward in terms of the clinical trials that we're doing. The markets that we're looking for are enormous, and these are all very poorly met illnesses. Traumatic brain injury, multiple sclerosis, epilepsy, migraine, ASD. These are problems in society. Um, people throw huge amounts of money in drug development to try and treat these disorders, and they treat them fairly poorly. The drugs that are actually approved to treat these various illnesses all have one major thing in common. They've all got significant side effects associated with them. The one thing about cannabis, other than the THC element, which will make you high, there are no safety risks in cannabis. It's already been established safe drugs. So that's why so much money gets poured into the cannabis sector, because we can see unlocking huge potential to rival the opioid market, which is why you very much, people in the audience here today, you should be investing in cannabis stocks. Obviously, I'd like you to invest in Neurotech particularly, but that's because we're different to the rest. But there's certainly a huge growth market. And we're actually in clinical trials right now for ASD, and we'll be moving into MS very soon. And certainly traumatic brain injury is another one that we're really interested in. So our strains have unique properties, and it's actually the anti-inflammatory properties of our strains that makes all the difference. And that's what we've done all the preclinical work in. We've established in those studies that the anti-inflammatory properties have a major effect on inflammatory diseases. And the diseases that I've just highlighted before, all these neurological disorders, they're inflammatory diseases. So you want drugs that are anti-inflammatory in nature. And it's regulating and suppressing inflammation by acting on the arginase 1, which is this powerful anti-inflammatory enzyme. And we've also got upregulating up and modulation of the beta tubulin protein, which is also essential to the survival and maintenance of healthy survival of brain cells. So these are the, it's very technical, I know, I'm trying to keep it simple, but effectively, that's what our strains actually act on in the brain, and that's the key to treating various neurological disorders. Um, the preclinical studies of, uh, is the best indicator you're going to have in terms of how well you're going to do in your actual human trials. And so these statistics that we have here, increasing in overall brain health and viability, um, also increase in micro, microbial viability and output. These are key indications in terms of the efficacy that we're seeing in test tubes in the, st the preclinical studies, which are going to be the best indicator you're going to get moving into human trials. We've recently just announced some results in the MS studies that we've done and demonstrated that these biomarkers are key inflammatory markers during disease onset and progression, and that our strains were found to be more effective than the standard, which is CBD. And so compared to that to learn, we were better by a factor of up to two and a half times. So those are the key findings from our preclinical studies, which give us the confidence to go and use shareholders' money in the rather expensive human trials that we're now undertaking. So in terms of the pathway, these in vitro assay assessments, they've been done. Uh, we've done the product formulation and final dose profiling. These are two key things that you must do before you move into your human trials. And then moving into the phase one, two human safety study, which we're conducting at Monash Children's Hospital. Uh, we started that in May of this year. We're going to get the readout of the results of that study 
certainly maybe by the end of November, certainly by December, these results will be hotly watched by the market and by the press in general because we all know that autism is a horrible illness for kids. It affects the parents probably even more and they're looking for treatments that are going to be able to treat that disorder. This is a large study in the sense of in terms of a phase one, two with 20 patients. Um, we've got a team of psychologists that are assessing these kids on a weekly basis and the results will be very meaningful. So watch this space. You should certainly be putting Neurotech on your watch list if you, whether, whether you invest today or wait for the results. Either way, I'm confident that, that this will be a very meaningful result which will have a major impact in the medical community because we're the only one in the world that's actually doing this study. So the whole medical fraternity is very interested in what we're doing in this particular space and we will be getting the results in the very near future. Why target all ASD? Well, I mentioned earlier about um, side effects associated with drugs. I mean, the drugs Ritalin and Concerta, they sell in the multiple billions of dollars. These are huge blockbuster drugs. And look at the side effects associated with them. You know, appetite loss, dry mouth, anxiety, irritability, and so forth. These kids have already got problems. And you're gonna throw all these other issues at them with the treatments that we're giving them. Imagine if you could have a treatment that's based on a cannabinoid that can provide the efficacy and the benefits for those kids um, without the side effects, particularly given that you have no THC within these strains. So this will be a blockbuster drug if we can show the efficacy. Uh, and of course, from a benefits outweighing the risk, clearly the benefits of the efficacy are gonna outweigh the risk in the sense that there's no THC element to the drug. So there is no side effect on that basis. So that's why this is a very exciting uh, uh, trial that we're doing. And if we can get success in autism spectrum disorder, I'm sure the market is gonna go, wow, in terms of the anti-inflammatory properties, what else can they treat? Can they go after MS now? Can they go after um, brain trauma or even Alzheimer's? So there's so many different applications if we can show that we've got those benefits happening within the brain with our treatment. In terms of pathways to commercialization, there's three huge markets. Starting with prescription, obviously a lot of doctors are now prescribing um, uh, cannabinoid based drugs to patients, but they're doing it on a sort of an ad hoc basis. Um, this is something that will grow with more regulatory approvals in drugs. The nutraceutical space I think is a particularly exciting one. If you look at all the big nutraceutical companies like Blackmore, Swiss, Nature's Own and so forth, even Nestle, there's not one cannabinoid based um, nutraceutical over-the-counter product available anywhere in the world. And that's because they're moving in that direction. But the problem is with all of them is that the THC side, they're simply not going to have an over-the-counter product with THC um, that's gonna be sold by Blackmores, for example. It's just not gonna happen. Unless, of course, you can present them with a product that has little to no THC with it. So that is for us a major, major market that we're focused on, the nutraceuticals, and there's government regulation that's being changed right now that's gonna open up that over-the-counter space. And I think that Neurotech is gonna be best positioned to capitalize on that huge growth market in over-the-counter nutraceutical space because of those unique properties that we have without THC and the anti-inflammatory properties of our specific uh, cannabinoids. And then of course you've got the pharmaceutical market, which is the biggest of them all. If we can show that we've got the efficacy and we pass regulatory approval, clearly we don't have the risks associated by other companies because we don't have the THC element. Um, we have a very huge market that's in the pharmaceutical space and that's gonna be open up doors to the big pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer, Merck, Johnson & Johnson that are looking for new drugs to treat existing problems. Um, we've gotta do the work and we're gonna get the results on that phase two clinical trial very soon and then we'll move into phase three. But by that stage, we're very confident if we get a good result in phase two, that we'll be successful in phase three. Um, the partners are really important for a small company like ourselves to be partnered with Monash Health, RMIT University, the Walter Eliza Hall Institute, Monash University and so forth. They've partnered with us. There's going to be new names added to this list. Um, bigger, more exciting names as we proceed, so please, Watch this space for us because we've got a great group of partners and it's only going to get better. In terms of finally a news flow, 
we've already achieved so many milestones in the preclinical space um, and uh, further results that we've announced in MS, uh, these interim results that we've produced in the phase one, two clinical study. Uh, we'll get those final results towards the end of this calendar year. Uh, then we'll move into phase three. That's gonna be a very exciting phase for us. And also then on the back of that, moving into new indications like multiple sclerosis. So these are huge unmet markets that we can treat uniquely with our strains. We exclusively own these strains. They're actually grown in Griffith, New South Wales. Um, they're exclusively ours for all neurological disorders. And uh, you know, we're very excited taking it forward. And uh, I hope I finished in time. And I thank you very much for your, for your time and listening to me. And I'm still around for the rest of the day. Thank you. No.